Greetings, folks, and welcome to Bob of All Trades. By popular request, people want to see what the overlay that I use to expose all of the performance statistics during my gameplay. And we are going to go over just that in today's video, more of a guide slash tutorial. And we're going to set this up using the Electronics RP-17 with the Ryzen 7 4800H and the RTX 2060. We're going to need two software downloads, the first one being MSI Afterburner, so let's start there. Now when you go to MSI Afterburner's homepage and scroll all the way down to the bottom, you should have two download options, the typical base download and the beta download. If you have access to the beta download, or if there is a beta download, now there might not be, so that's okay, but if there is, oftentimes that's going to grant you a few more options versus the uh, the tried and true, you know, MSI Afterburner version. So in this case, we're going to download the beta version because I know for a fact it's going to show us the wattage that is being pulled from the RTX 2060 versus the uh, the base mode right now won't. And six months down the road, this might not mean anything as an update will eventually come along and give more options for that overlay within this piece of software. So we're going to download the beta version of this. All right, so once you have this application installed on your laptop, it will definitely ask you to reboot the system. Now, I've already had this installed on my laptop, so it's not asking me to do that, but definitely reboot your laptop, come back to this point, and then once you open up MSI Afterburner, click on this little cog wheel here. Now, the two things on the general tab that I want to go over is one, which GPU to select. Since this laptop has the uh, Radeon built into the 4800H, I don't want to monitor that one. I want to monitor the dedicated graphics, which would be the RTX 2060. So I'm going to click on that. For general properties, if you want to have this start up when Windows boots, you can do so. That way, if you're always wanting to monitor your games, just a very good quality of life thing. But understand that unplugged on battery if this application is running in the background it's going to constantly ping the dedicated graphics card and therefore eat up that battery life so don't run this when unplugged click on the monitoring tab okay now gpu1 is the radeon we don't care about that one we want to monitor the rtx 2060 so that's gpu temperature 2 so i'm going to click on that show on screen display gpu2 usage show on screen display. Now these are, geez, they're just things that I choose to monitor for you guys for my reviews and in my own personal spare time, but just pick as many of these as you wish. And of course you can just fill up the screen to your heart's content. We're gonna go, let's go memory usage as well. Something I usually don't feature, but I've been playing a lot of Flight Sim 2020 lately on my laptops for testing. And it's just fun to watch the memory usage get uh, beat up in that title. The core clock, I definitely want to monitor that. Oh, the power. So this won't be the power limit, but the actual wattage that the GPU is pulling. And since this particular laptop has electro boost, it's not going to be able to show that 110 watts, but it will reveal up to 90 watts according to the software here. And this is actually something new for the beta. If you're watching this six months down the road, this will likely just be part of MSI Afterburner uh, beta set aside. So very nice that they have updated it to that regard. Of course, power limit. I do feature that oftentimes, but when I'm done reviewing a laptop, I, I don't even bother monitoring that anymore because I already understand the power limits. I just put that on there for you guys. Uh, let's see here. CPU. Now, we have a 16-thread chip in here. But I don't care about the usage of an individual thread. I just want to see the general CPU usage. So I'm going to click on this. Same with the clock speed. We have 16 different threads. So we can monitor each one of those clocks individually per thread. I just want to do the general CPU clock. And then when it comes to memory usage, RAM usage, I have been monitoring this. Again, been playing a lot of flight sim where 16 gigabytes may not be cutting it under certain uh, circumstances and locations. So I have been monitoring that as well. And then I need to check the frame rate box, click on it again, and then show that on screen display. And if you want to see frame times, a frame rate minimum, frame rate average, frame rate max, frame rate 1% low, the frame rate minimum could come in handy for you a little bit here. Um, so yeah, perhaps you guys might like that. So now uh, let's... Let's go ahead and let's go ahead and change the user interface 
this to me is just a little busy of an aesthetic and I'm a little old school, so I do prefer uh, this look right here. All right, now, as you can see, we are on driver version 442.80. This is way out of date, okay? This driver dates back to April and it was never even officially on um, NVIDIA's support page. This is a generic driver. The product ID and NVIDIA's um, uh, drivers themselves have not synced up yet. So this happens all the time. It's my understanding that 451 is in the works and we should have access to that at any time. It's a little unfortunate when you review products that a lot of times, if you're reviewing the latest and greatest stuff, it's really difficult to get uh, the drivers. And yes, you can do a dis display driver uninstall. You can do DDU, everything you want to do to your blue in the face. Trust me, I, I know how to do this. I went down that rabbit hole and you just cannot go anything further than 442 or anything earlier than 442.80. So just give it time. There's nothing wrong with the system. It's just a device ID recognition that's just going to take some time before NVIDIA updates it on their end and then we can further proceed with getting newer drivers. I remember early 2019, I reviewed the MSI GT 75 Titan, and that was when RTX was new and it had a 150 watt 2080 in it. And here I am trying to put together a review, showcase to the community what it's like with this new RTX solution, and you just couldn't get new drivers for it. It took months, which was very unfortunate, but it's just the nature of the beast, and it's something that a lot of people probably wouldn't have to experience unless they're getting the latest and greatest newest technology. And, you know, I mean, that's probably not a, a very common thing, right? All right, so anyway, let's proceed into a game, and I can show you what we have monitored so far. So far, what we have monitored is the GPU temperature, usage, clock speed, the GPU's video memory, we have the CPU's usage and clock speed, the total system memory being used out of 16 gigabytes on the system, and our frame rate. But there's a few more things that I want to see that MSI Afterburner was just unable to show me, and this is why we need to use Hardware Info 64. And I will also put a link in the description below for that download installation as well. So here we have Hardware Info 64, and I'm going to run just the Sensors tab. All right, now there is a lot of information here. We're going to try to keep this as simple as possible. So what I am looking for is the temperature. Here we go. Now this normally won't be called temp, but since I've already had this installed in the system, I had renamed this earlier. But I'm going to click on this right here. It's very important that I click on this. It's going to save me some time. So when I click on this, go down to the cog wheel, and then where it says OSD RTSS, on screen display, Riba Tuner Statistics Server. That's right. That is going to read this, which was bundled in to MSI Afterburner. I'm going to click on that, and because I had previously clicked on temp here, when I clicked on it here, it automatically found it, so I don't have to scroll looking for it manually. Just a nice little pro tip to save you some time. Now, naturally, this would have no for the uh, being able to display this. We want to show the value in the on-screen display, so I'm going to tick that box being yes, and then if you want to change the actual title of this, then go to, make sure you have clicked on this, go to custom, and again, it'll find it right there. The original would be CPU and then uh, C, uh, TCTL forward slash TDI. That would be the actual label of the sensor, and I had renamed that to temp. And when you rename it, you would just type in whatever you want to rename it, click rename. If I want to call this Bob and then click rename, it will actually show up as Bob. That's right, Bob, you are 78 degrees Celsius. So pretty neat that we can do that in real time. I just want to change this over to temp, click rename, and then again, we can get this um, on screen in real time. Isn't that pretty nice there? I like that. Pretty awesome. And then what about power? We want to see the wattage, the power that the CPU is drawing. So let's go ahead and address that right now. Now going back to Hardware Info 64, let's scroll down till we can see this right here. Now this won't be called Power. I'll show you what it's called here in a hot second. So I'm going to click on that, click on the cog wheel, 
go to the OSD RTSS, and there it is, power. Now it says yes already because I already have it showing in the system as you just saw, but normally this would say no. You would click show value in on-screen display. If you want it to show the label in on-screen display, of course, tick that box as well. Hit custom, and normally it would say CPU core power. So if we want to change that to what it would normally say, normally it would look just like this. You would get to this point and it would say, okay, CPU core power, CPU core power. Of course, you can change that. And I try to minimize the amount of clutter on screen. Obviously, you can read this right here. It says CPU core power, and you can really just fill this up and it can get really crazy with a, a, just a lot of information on screen. So it's up to you. I mean, who am I to tell you how to customize this? Feel free to do this as you wish. Uh, what about the actual location, however, of some of this stuff? You may have seen other videos showcasing this type of overlay, and there's just information spread out, you know, vertically all over the screen, and it may not look as organized. So if that is the case, you're going to see here, when I go back to temperature, I position this at line 2. Normally, it would be at line 1, and when it's at line 1, it just starts to extend everything across the screen and it loses some of that organization that is annoying. So you can change where you want this as far as the columns and lines and everything like that. So if I want to move this down to 10, which I wouldn't want to, but then it would put it all the way down there on the screen. And sky's the limit for as adjustability goes, so just keep that in mind. You're going to have to toy with it a little bit. I'm not really offering any recommendations if you want to just copy and paste essentially everything I've done here by all means go for it this is the way I like to do things and this is the way that I have been revealing stuff on the channel now for quite some time but uh, yeah that's it just a very simple guide and tutorial we did this featuring the Ryzen 4800H because MSI Afterburner is currently not reading some of the sensors that are associated to temperature and wattage for that CPU, and I wanted to show you guys how to pull that together with Hardware Info 64. Just keep in mind that when you want to monitor this stuff, you will need to have MSI Afterburner and Hardware Info 64 running in the background. No big deal, but just a heads up. Good luck to you. That's going to do it. I'm Bob Waltrates, and I hope to see you in the next video.